right, you guys, we are back with Behind the Bikini, and this is episode 20. I can't believe Woo! we have made it. I was like, I was like, oh my god, we're at a round number. <laughs> that's, that's so exciting. You know, I remember right? when it was 10? <laughs> I know, when it was one, right? Like, yeah. I, I was looking back, actually, I was looking back through, because, you know, we do the thumbnails and stuff every, every episode, and I was looking back through uh, my designs, and I was like, damn, I was like, that was like this summer. I was like, where did the time go? Like, it goes by so fast. So yeah, fast. makes you it's realize crazy. literally how fast the year went. Oh my God. I'm like, we're I literally don't know where the time went. So, no. but yeah, we're on episode 20. Um, so if you guys haven't already subscribe, like comment, all the fun things. And um, we are on Spotify now too. Um, as of last episode. So we said with the new year, we're going to start on Spotify as well. So it is on Spotify. You can click the link in the description box below to get to Spotify. That's easier for you to listen there. And um, today our topic, we're going to talk about taking rest days and recovery days and how they're important because it's kind of a hot topic at the moment. So that's what we're going to go into in a little bit. But before we do all that, how's everything going with you? Uh, so good. I can finally report something happy. <laughs> oh, good. That's a good thing. So what's what's happy? What, what can you report happy? Well, we just, we, uh, we've been in Arizona a week now. We absolutely love it here. Good. Um, it is freezing here. Um, really? I, yeah, it like never, I guess, rains in, in Arizona and it yeah. rained yesterday. It woke up, it was like that, like sprinkly type mm -hmm. rain and very cold. We were out running errands yesterday for a couple hours and literally we left and it was 50 degrees. And by the time we got back two hours later, it was 38 degrees. Oh shit. That is, yeah. that is cold. I was, I was about to say what's cold because we can have very different, different yeah. definitions of cold because you're in Flor from Florida. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> no, it was cold. Very well, cold. Wow. So that's been interesting. And I don't know, it's just, it's life is so different here. And like one of the like things I really wanted to do this year was kind of like break out of like my routine. I've been in Florida my entire life. We've lived in our home in Florida for five years. You know, we wake up, we do the same things all the time. So like in our apartment complex, it's really cool. There's so many recovery resources okay. here. We have a cold plunge here. We have a sauna here, a steam room, hot tub. So Drew and I are, you know, waking up. And one of the first things that we you know, talked about of, you know, our goals as our couples. And we, mm -hmm. we were talking about that last week is that we didn't want to open up our phones and our laptops right away and start with work right away. Yeah. So we've been waking up and we've been uh, drinking coffee together and then I'll go down and do cardio and he'll go in the steam room and then we'll hot tub. And then we open up our computers or okay. take our dogs down to the, to the dog park. And it's just so great here. It's so healthy and it's so good for like our mood and our mental state and it's just been awesome so we're, we're really happy um i'm getting ready for a really big trip next couple of weeks so this weekend obviously yeah. i'm going to ccts yes um and then right after ccts i'm actually flying right into tampa um okay. and i'm going to be in tampa the entire week finishing the uh the little projects that i left at the gym and then from there, I'm going to go to the women's seminar in Orlando. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I go to Miami on that Sunday for my sister-in-law's bridal shower. And then oh, I'll geez. be back in Arizona. So it's going to be a little crazy and I'm a little anxious because it's the first time that the dogs are, are going to be alone and without oh, like their yeah. normal house sitters and without us. So a little anxious about that, but it will all work out. It always yeah. does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Isn't that so funny that the, the biggest thing that we worry about is our animals? <laughs> Yeah, they're our kids. I know they are. They are. Yeah. I'm like we always say all the time. Like if I, if I smile a hundred times a day, eighty of those is because of my dogs. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least, yeah. at least eighty of them is because of my dogs. So yeah, you know, I get that. And like same with us. We always have people come over and watch the dogs. We never take them and board them or anything like that. We always have house sitters and things. So you know we have a security camera system, so we can always look in and make sure they're okay and all that kind of stuff. But you know you still. Like oh, the little, little little kids. Little guys. Little kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know, funny because in our building, there's a lot of animals. There's a lot of dogs. Yeah. And there's no goldens, so everybody oh. loves golden. So mm -hmm. now that Ollie and Penny are here, we'll be in the dog park, and people are just like coming in. They're like, "Can we pet your dog?" Oh, <laughs> sure. And then so we were we were down there last night, and there was this woman that came out, and she was like, "Can I pet your dog?" Yes. And then 
come to find out her golden just passed away a year ago and she travels for work all the time and she was like do you need a a pet sitter and she like gave me her old pet sitter's number i texted the guy he didn't write me back but i was like this is so cool like people are just so nice here and so helpful and yeah it's really awesome you know it's funny like i used to live in vegas and like the things you're talking about having uh the amenities that you have at your new place is kind of like that's what i had at my my apartment complex when i lived out there too i kind of sometimes i miss that i like having my own house don't get me wrong i like having my house and my space and everything like that but sometimes the amenities yeah i could i could definitely understand (laughs) loving the amenities right yeah Yeah. one thing we want to add is we do want to add like a hot tub so we don't have that but uh we want to we have a the the lower area we have an area where we could put a hot tub so we do want to do that eventually so that'll be our one of our amenities here at the house (laughs) it feels really nice i highly suggest it i know right in florida we have a we have a pool that we built a few years ago and it's we call it a party pool it's four and a half feet deep and it's it's on the smaller side it's just a big square well in this in in the winter usually we crank that heater up and it's like one big hot tub so the electricity bill on that is ridiculous (laughs) So I was I just saying, like, high maintenance. Yeah. So I yeah. love that I'm able to, to hot tub on somebody else's diet. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm trying to think, like, the, the gyms that I go to now don't even have hot tubs. So, I mean, I have a really, like, so in my my master bedroom, uh, we have a bath attached. So the, the wall between the, the bedroom and the bathroom is a fireplace. So like you oh, can pretty. see like through the fireplace into the master yeah. bathroom, bathroom and bedroom. So we have this nice big, huge spa tub and stuff, which is, I do use that all the time for like Epsom salt baths and things like that. But it's, that's as close as I get to the hot tub right now. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. I yeah. mean, Epsom salt baths can do a ton. Yes. A ton. Yeah. Which I think I need to take one of those tonight. So I was gonna say, how's your week going? And you're like, going. yeah, I know. My Probably stress is like, one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it, it's it's just one of those things. Is like we have to do A, B, C, D. Like I'm just living by a list right now. You know what I mean? And um, like one thing I and I always forget about this, and then I do it, and then I realize. So I have a slight allergy to red dye. So like Ooh. food dye. So my brother in law has that. Yeah, I started using a different water sweetener two days ago, and it has red dye in it. And now I have people go to the bathroom in two days, and I'm like, "Damn it!" <laughs> I was like, "I know." I and I, I just realized it last night. I'm like, "Cause I've been putting this freaking water flavoring into my water." I'm like, "That's what the problem is." And I'm like, "Man, that's well, like really a really small adjustment." Thank God you thought about that. Yeah, I was like, you know, and I know it because I feel it. Like, I'm like, what did I eat differently? I was thinking that the last two days, like, what did I eat differently that's, that would be doing this to me? And I'm like, it's the freaking water. I'm like, God, is that why you're wearing red to remind yourself today not to <laughs> yeah, wear red? Exactly. Yeah. Red? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and it's just, and that's red looks good on you. That's a mood. I like Thank it. You. Thank you. I You're like welcome. It. it makes me look very like white though. Like my face. Plus, I just touched up my hair too. So my hair's darker. So now I look really right, really white. dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm exactly. like, there's that. So I'm like, yeah, I'm looking a little bit vampirish right now. So uh we'll put some spray tan out and then we'll be fine when it comes. I know I need <laughs> to do that before I come see I know. you. Oh yeah, I'm 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 doing that this weekend. Don't worry. Yeah, for sure. Um but yeah, so I was like, oh, that's the one thing. Like other than other than that, physique wise, like I feel fine. But like I, I, you know, like that's the one thing that I'm like, well, damn it, that was stupid. So I mean, I think a, a good, you know, get some flush some water through me today and stuff like that, and take Epsom salt bath and stuff like that would be good tonight. So, I mean, as far as that stuff's concerned, I feel really good in the gym. Like my hunger signals have completely leveled out. So good. I'm, not, I'm not hungry anymore. Like I was like ravenous, you know. I'm still, you know, you still have the normal, like I'm still trying to grow and things like that. So I still have that hunger, but it's not like, oh my God, I need to eat now. It's not that anymore. You know what I mean? That intense um, hunger. Yeah. And just the last, I would say the last probably three or four days, I started really feeling myself like bopping around in the gym again. You know, like before it was just like, okay, I have to go get this done. I have to go get this done. That kind of thing. But I can always tell when my, when my energy and my mood starting to shift a little bit. Cause like I'll dance between sets and stuff like that. Like, like bop into the music and everything. And I started doing that again this weekend and I'm like, oh, okay. I'm starting to feel better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Like, it's like, it's like, I never, like I never felt bad, you know, but you just, there's a difference in your mood and there's a difference in your strength and I can feel my strength going up and things like that too. And I'm just like, oh, okay, I got it. Like, it's just like, my I'm just feeling a little bit better about things right good um, good and I think part of that is because we are settling into this last week too and just for CCTS and it's just like everything is what it is at this point 
and there's not a whole lot I can do to change anything at this point other than just ride the wave. So it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, you know, I, it's, it's stressful, but at the same time, it's like, like I said, you just got to check the boxes every day and it's just, you got to get stuff done. You just have to get stuff done and that's it, you know, and I've done this for nine years. I know that this is going to be the case. There's going to be stuff that goes wrong. There's going to be stuff that goes right. That's what happens when you run events, you know? And yeah. at, this, at this point, it's like, just gotta, just gotta ride the wave. <laughs> As we go, just gotta ride the yep. wave. So, you know, um, I'm going to try to keep my, you know, my nutrition and stuff like that on point as best I can. I, you know, I, I, I said to myself last week, so I take one rest day a week. We're going to talk about rest days in a minute, but I take one rest day a week and typically I do it on Thursday. So that's my check-in day. So I wait till I get my, um, my updates and stuff and then I apply it. Right. So, uh, but this Thursday, I was like, no, something's going to happen where I'm going to, I'm going to need a day. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, I'm just going to work out regardless. I'm just going to do it. And that's a good thing. So I ended up going and getting my Botox touched up the next day. So I was like, I can't lift. I got to go get my Botox done. <laughs> I was like, you know, I, I planned ahead. So I'm good, you know? So good. it's just like those little things keep you mentally stable. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like, I, I'm like, I know I didn't, I didn't lose any time. I didn't lose any lifting. I didn't lose any, any of my cardio. I didn't lose any of that stuff. Right. So I feel, I feel good right now. And even if I miss a day or something like that this week, I'm, I'm, it is what it is, you know, not a big deal. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you're it's be funny okay. because last it. year at CCTS, I remember you were like really settled into your off season yeah. at that point. And here you are again, one week before yep. CCTS and feeling like you're settled. Yeah. In. Yeah. Yeah. And like last year was, uh, I was going into it a little different too. Cause I was coming out of having COVID. So, Being sick. you know, like yeah. I was, it was, it was, it was hard. Like, um, I felt squishy. I felt soft. I felt all those things. You know what I mean? And I was like, I, I felt skinny. Like I look back at pictures and I'm like, man, I look skinny. Like, that's what mm -hmm. I felt like. I felt like, meh, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> like, cause it really, I really was, I was, I was like less than a week removed from having like really being sick from COVID, you know what I mean? So yeah, this year, not as full. That's not the problem. yeah, this year, that's not the yeah. problem. So as long as I don't take in any more red food dye, <laughs> I'll be fine. let's not do that. I'm I sure know. you have some beautiful outfits to get into. And oh, I do. Like that. Yeah. No, I, I do. Wait. I'm like, I've I got can't so wait many to things. see your outfits. <laughs> it's always, I'm like, I'm like planning out when I'm going to change and all this kind of stuff too. So I'm like, like we talked about the last week, I was like, I got to, I've got to be able to do the new glute workout with you guys and stuff on Saturday. So I've got to change like three times on Saturday. <laughs> You're planning like in your own agenda. Yeah. Eight to nine, I'm going to wear this outfit. To the literally. Yeah. Like, literally, that's what I'm doing. That there's no exaggeration. I'm like, okay, I have to start the morning with this. And then I have to go to workout gear. And then I, then I talk, I talk after lunch. So I got to have this outfit on for my top. <laughs> Stay out of your way next weekend. I'm just going to be like, hi, here's coffee. I know, right? For real. Hi, here's coffee. Oh God. Well, that, you know, like I said, like that's, that's the other thing. Like usually we have the same event coordinator every year and we have a different event coordinator this year. So we don't even have that piece of stress. Like, figure it out. You know what I mean? Because we don't know how she's going to respond to go. certain things. Like, like yeah. we want our, our guy back, but you know, it's what it is. But um, he got promoted. I know. Right. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, eh, screw you. Do it so good at your job. Damn it. <laughs> so how dare you. <laughs> I know. So, but, uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I, it's, it's, um, it, it, everything's coming together. And like, and again, it's like, it's one of those things too. It's like, cause we've done this for so long. We work with the same people all the time, as far as like our, our lighting setup and all that kind of stuff too. So it's like, they know what, what they're doing. So it's like, usually, I don't know. I feel like we usually have more stuff like we're done, but we, we don't, you know what I mean? Like, they're just like, Oh yeah, we're good. We got it. You know, like they already know what we need. We've been doing it with them for like, like our, our audio visual people for like four years. So it's like, we, they already know. And it's like, but I feel like we should be, looking at stuff, but we don't need to because we just did this. We did this last year and you did the exact same thing. So you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just a weird thing. So it is, it just feels like you should be planning or doing it and you don't have to. It's yeah, it's the exactly. same. It's already done. Yeah. Exactly. But it just adds that little layer of stress almost because you're like me. It's like, you just want to know that it's talked exactly. about and that everyone's on the same page. Yep. But you just got to exactly kind of right. release and and hope that it, it works out because <laughs> it, it always does again it always works out you know we're doing a few things a few little things different this year like i said we're not doing the the, the typical live stream like we do every year 
but that's still, we're still recording it just like normal. So it's not like that, that piece is going away. So it's just like, you know, just little things are different. Little things are different. Our event coordinator being different, like the food selections being different, like all those kinds of yeah. things. We, we always, whatever we do the, cause when you come to CCTS, the food's included and all that kind of stuff. So we always make it different every year. So it's just not the same repeat every year. You know what I mean? We make sure the breakfast is a little different. The, the dinners are a little different, all that kind of stuff. So just choosing the menu options and stuff like, I don't know, just little things like that. It, it, it all starts adding up. Little things start adding up over time. <laughs> CCTS so, breakfast is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it really is amazing. Egg bites. Yeah. 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 It's the yogurt. It's a, oh, mm -hmm. can't wait. Yeah. The, the fresh, the fresh squeezed juices, all that stuff. Yeah. Smoothies. Yeah. 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 All that, you know, and that's all hand picked. Literally, by us, it's by the way. to the nines, guys. Yeah. It is to the nines. It's, yeah. It's such a great weekend. Like all like the little details and the things you don't and... think. Of. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. This isn't a typical buffet. This no. is like Disney buffet, which is right. crazy. But Disney does their buffets to the ninth, right? Or <laughs> That's too funny. Vegas buffet. I Vegas, don't know. yeah. I don't know. Like, what is it? The I think the the win or something has like the best buffet in Vegas. I think something like that. Okay, I'm glad you said that. So the last time we were in Vegas, Drew was like, "There is this buffet that like everyone goes to, and they have like these yeah. massive crab legs." And we're googling it, and then all these buffets are coming up. I'm like, "Okay, listen, it can't be all of these buffets. There's got to right. be the one buffet." And I texted my best friend who goes to Vegas all the time, and she's like, "I really have no clue what you're talking about." And I was like, "Okay, well, she doesn't know, then I'm gonna be screwed." But now I don't know. Okay, yeah. so you think it's the win? Somebody else sure said that it was the win too. Yeah. Okay. So the win, I've been cool. to the, the buffet at the win and it's amazing. It really is. It's okay. huge. And then if you're thinking, but you just said seafood, you said the crab legs. So if you're thinking seafood, I think that was the Rio. It was. Okay. I don't know if it is anymore, okay. but if you're looking at seafood stuff, I, I'm pretty sure it's the Rio that does the big seafood one. Um, you just said there's somewhere that he thought had the, this is Drew, had these massive like king crab legs or something i was like that I might be seen this I, I don't know again i used to live in vegas but that was years and years and years and years ago sure. so things have changed sure. since then they've got a lot new a lot of new stuff there too that they didn't have before but from what i can remember i believe the win is the one that's like the best one in vegas kind of thing you know okay so that was a side shot sorry yeah it's okay <laughs> we, we have we have bodybuilders who listen to this podcast they want to know where to go eat and you know vegas, go vegas we got the olympia back in vegas again so you know that it, it all connects it does it all it does. connects i'm gonna be going there <laughs> oh gosh oh my god so, back to what's currently going on so yeah so um you know actually we have a lot of stuff that's supposed to be delivered tomorrow that's that's getting delivered today which is good i was mentioning that when we were getting on this today that um I, I, that's a good thing, but now I have to rearrange my whole schedule for today because a lot of stuff's being delivered today that I thought was going to be delivered tomorrow. So, you know, just think again, little things that we have to, we have to do, but, um, better for it to be early though. Yes. Than late. So 100%, that's a blessing. hundred yeah. percent better to be early. Um, yeah. so, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to like, just, just a matter of, of holding on and just going through it and just getting there, you know, holding on. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the hard part about it too, is that I want to be able to actually enjoy the weekend as well. And it's really hard for me to do that when I'm, when I'm running the whole thing, hosting, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, making sure everything goes off. Okay. And that everybody's good. And like, you know, there's just so many moving parts. Um, one thing that is good this year is that typically Dan is not able to be available during the weekend. He is this year. So I'm like, Oh, yay. So I've got him to be able to run around and do stuff for me in the background where like he, Good. you'll never, you'll never even see him. You may see him. You'll like never I, see him. Yeah. No, <laughs> you may see him on Friday. Like when he's setting up the, the whole room and all that kind of stuff. And when we're tearing down on Monday, you may see him, but that's the only time you'll see him, but he's, he's working in the background. He's running around doing he's stuff around. in the background, everything that's going on for technology wise. He's the one that's running all that stuff in the background, all the, all of that. So, um, so he's going to be uh, available, available this time, which typically he's good. not. So that's a good thing. So, um, Even just for you, just to yeah. know you have that person and that mental support and well, that's, you know, that's like, huge just for you. you know, just simple things too. Like what I was talking about with Christmas when our whole like server wasn't working with purchases and stuff like that, like things like that. I can't, I can't fix that, you know, stuff like that. I can't fix, I can't fix our back end of our website. You know, he can, you know, so just having that available is a good thing. So, 
so yeah, so mm -hmm, it's gonna be gonna be fun, gonna be a fun week basically. But I got my Botox touched up, I got my nails done, I got my hair done. I'm good. <laughs> I got, got the important things out of it. I got all my dresses and all my outfits. I'm good. So good. the important things. Good. We're ready. When are you uh, heading uh, to uh, the venue? Friday morning? Uh, no, Thursday. 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 So we start taking stuff over on Wednesday. So it's about 45 minute drive back and forth between where our house is and, um, and the Ritz. So this year we're actually going to do a U-Haul. Typically we just take a couple trips back and forth, um, but we're going to just do a U-Haul. So we can do it all in one trip this year. And uh and then I get in on Thursday because they allow us to start setting stuff up if we can, or I just at least get stuff assembled inside my room and then I can just bring it out on Friday because check-ins start at three o'clock on Friday. So we start checking everybody in at three. Um, so I'm already there and setting up everything at like 9 a.m. in the morning. So, um, and then our, you know, our tech people are in there working, you know, setting everything up in the actual venue Stage. and all of that too. Yeah. yeah. The staging and the lighting and the, the LED boards and all that kind of stuff. And then, um, and then cocktail hour starts at seven. Is that right? Six? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head. I don't look at the, the schedule. So I know. So I think cocktail hour starts at seven. I think it could be six. It could be six. I hope. But... <laughs> because, yeah. That makes sense. Cause we land at like three or four and we yeah. knew we only had like two or three hours before the event started. Right. So that, mm -hmm. that makes, that timeline makes sense. Yeah. It's either six or seven. It's one of the two. And then, uh, so, and, then, and that goes until, we, <laughs> and that goes until we decided to stop. Um, the one I remember the one year we were sitting there till freaking two in the morning or something. Some some I didn't stay there till two in the morning, but some people did. <laughs> that will not be me. <laughs> no. But the the funniest one, and she's gonna crack up, is is Marilyn, Liquid Sunrays, Marilyn. Yeah. Oh my god, she's like a partier. I'm like, oh, I can't believe like she was having a great time. <laughs> Every I know, like, I know, like so she's the only sponsor that has been with us since the very first the very first cuties nine years ago. Right. But she never actually came to the event until we started hosting it at the Ritz. Like she would send like other people to come and things like that. She finally came and she was like, I didn't realize you did it like this. <laughs> I was like, I was like, like yes. I've been missing out on a vacation. Uh, all yes. Time She's like, I can't believe this. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm, I'm like, I'm telling you, like I told Jamie last year, like, so the background story about last year is that somebody from the body fusion got sick. That was supposed mm -hmm. to be speaking. So literally I had two hours notice. Hey, do you want to go with me to keep to this event? I was like, I don't know where I'm going, but sure. Put me on a yep. plane. So I went, I had no clue what I was walking into. And I told Jamie at the end of the weekend, like, I felt so blessed that that yeah. happened because number one, I don't know if I would have ever gone without, you know, that fit body giving me that opportunity. Number two, the, the women there. And we've talked yeah. about this, just the connections that you make. Like, I'm so excited to see all the girls again. And everybody's already talking yes. and some of my clients are going and just the connections there are so special. And it's something that it's so hard to describe, like we've talked about. And, and a part of, you know, the, the recording or not recording too, is creating that safe space. So the girls yes. have a really safe space to talk and ask questions and, the girls really do get deep and ask fantastic questions that maybe you can't do elsewhere. Yep. Um, so I told Jamie at the end of the weekend last year, I was like, number one, I feel so blessed that Shelby got sick. So sorry, <laughs> Shelby, but <laughs> I, I feel blessed for that. <laughs> and number two, I said, I want to come back next year. I hope yeah. that's okay. She goes, you will be back next year. Oh. So it's awesome. I'm so, so, so excited. Well, it gave us an opportunity like, to get to know each other too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Each other like, like, Facebook friends, you know what yeah. I mean? Like online and Instagram, now look at us. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. You just never know when an opportunity like that's going to, going to pop up and you just got to say yes sometimes and go for yeah. it. And, yeah. um, and you're right. I mean, it, it is a safe space. And that's the, the one thing that I think that people don't realize in this sport specifically is that women really need that community aspect. You know, I don't think the Even men they do don't know they as do. much. Yes. I don't think the men do as much. I think they're more like selfish and on their own and all that kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just how they're wired, you know, but with women, I mean, what really keeps us involved in this sport and keeps us linked to the sport is the other women in the sport, you know, like, like having that, having somebody that we can, that we can rely on and trust and we can talk to our, to them about our problems and all those kinds of things. That sense of community, women are very, very social, very community driven, you know, yeah. and it gives us that outlet, gives us that space to do that. 
And like you said, I mean, even though we're not doing the live uh, feed the way we typically do, we don't allow for recording in the actual event. So it is, it's a safe space and there's no men there other than a couple of sponsors that show up. Um, and it's, it's just, it's just all females and you can ask the questions that you can't ask at a typical bodybuilding show and things like that. Um, and you know, we do have a segment where we actually turn off all cameras and all mics and everything where you can just go one-on-one -on -one with each of the, the, the pros and the uh, speakers that we have there and ask those personal questions that you can't ask anywhere else and have that one-on-one -on -one time that you can't do anywhere else, you know, and, yeah. feel, safe, and feel safe doing it. And the, the thing is, is like, you go to these shows, you know, the seminars, things like that. And those are great. And, all that, and I'm not taking anything, anything away from those because they are, they're, they're, they're really awesome. But the thing that's different about this is that you are immersed in it for, you know, for three days and that allows you, you, yeah, allows you to open up more. It allows yeah. you to feel like you're, you can trust the space that you're in. You can trust the people that you're around. And it, it just, it just helps you to, to really dive in a little deeper into all of those segments. Um, well, I think that goes yourself. towards you and the way that you kind of set it up, right? So like the first night is the cocktail hour. Yes. So you're getting to know everyone and yes. talking to them and figuring them out on a personal level. Yep. And then, you know, Saturday morning you start classes and the yep. way that you have the table set up, you know, it's very mm -hmm. intimate and everybody's with Correct. each other. So it's, it's really in the design, you know, yes. and how people start to feel connected and like everybody truly feels like they know each other very fast yes and that's that provides that level of comfort and absolutely you know last year when we turned off all the mics and things like that i was like okay how deep are we going to go and some of those questions got very deep i mean these women feel very safe and very secure and i was like this yeah. is so cool like yeah. this is something that people cannot find anywhere absolutely. so it is it's it's amazing it's absolutely. you should feel very proud which i know you are but you <laughs> you should feel very proud of what you've built it's amazing and it's one of those things that sometimes you don't realize until you step back and you're like oh my god i like this 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 happened because i had this thought this thought in my head you know 10 years ago of what can we do that could be special you know that could be different you know and, and you never know where it's going to lead to like you said like just just you saying la yes last year brought us to where we are now with the podcast and all that kind of stuff too you know what i mean it's just like you just never know where it could lead to and um so it's really it's 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 different and it's unique and it's special and it's a ton of work and people don't realize that part of it but I do it, like I always say, I'm like, guys, you don't realize how much of a labor of love this is because it really is. It really is. Like we, like we, we put our, we put our butts on the line every single year for this thing. And trust me, it's stressful. Like just even knowing if we're going to make our money back that we invest into it, you know? And I try to tell people, like people don't realize this is just me and my husband. Like this comes out of our our food <laughs> you know what i mean so your pocket it's like, your yeah neighbor, if, if it's not, not a team yes yeah. if it's not successful we don't eat <laughs> you know it just it, it is what it is and like that's the hard part that people i think forget about being like a small business owner and stuff like that is like there is no big corporation behind us where we're pulling money from that's no. not that's not we're not getting paychecks like this yeah. is this, this isn't is a goose us. egg thing yeah, yeah this yeah. is us it just is and it's like you know we try to we try to run it as strictly as we can with understanding you know what i mean and it's hard to do sometimes because as you know being a coach you get close to people and it's like you you feel for people but you also have to draw a line too and it's very very difficult to do that and sometimes i find myself feeling like i'm being really cold and i'm like but i, I have to because if i treat you this way then i have to treat them that way and then all this kind of stuff so it's like things that people don't understand go on here where like this is fighting this constantly, yeah. constantly. My head is That's fighting my owner. heart, mm -hmm. constantly because I feel for people. I really do, and it's like it's like it's it's it's. We're very in the service industry, sometimes. of course. Mm -hmm. We want to do everything, and we want to do everything for free, but we yes. can't. We That's have right. to make a living, right? Yes. But there is a way that we can have a career and also take care of people but it is it's such a fine line and once Absolutely. you cross that line sometimes or cross that boundary you, you kind of screw yourself so you gotta right. you gotta really be selective and choosy that was really hard for me at first when i became a business owner because yep. you know i went for working from somebody who was actually my family and so 
those lines were grayed for a really long time. Absolutely. Now I'm stepping into being my own boss. I have no one, you know, controlling my money or, you know, what I want to do with my business. But then I, I am re now responsible for all of that. Yeah. Now I'm creating relationships with my staff and trying to maintain a level of professionalism, but I love all of them tremendously and I want to do everything for them as well. It's, these are the things that people don't think about, you know, nope. there's so many intricate levels of these relationships and decisions and constantly fighting that. Yeah, absolutely. And then, so again, going back to then, so you have to make all these decisions that are going to be the, for the betterment of the group. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't, you can't put one person's, one person's feelings ahead of everybody else. And then that's what leads to this weekend of everybody feeling so secure and like safe and like having this, this space. And if we didn't do the things that we did ahead of time to get to that point, we wouldn't have that there. You know what I mean? Yeah. True. It, it just it all, it all bleeds into that one, that one spot. And it's like, everybody, everybody feels welcomed, accepted equals, you know, like I hear that a lot from the girls. Like they can't believe like brand new people who have never competed before, never gotten on stage. They can't believe how like down to earth somebody like you, who's been to the Olympia three times or two times going the third time, how, how, how they can just sit and have a conversation with you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, that's what it, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to creating that whole, that, 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 that full vibe together, you know? Yeah. So, you know, bridging the gap. Mm -hmm. bridging the gap yeah mm -hmm. and it's you know it's, it's it's a very very tough balancing act but then once you get there it's like oh this is what it was for this was this right. is why this is why it's worth it right and once you, you figure know? it out it's easy to manage but yeah. it's just about finding that <laughs> yeah exactly you know that was the thing too it was like our first couple of years when we did it it was like it was like we <laughs> all over the place because we're you know you learn oh, as you I'm go sure. you learn I'm as sure. you go you know, yeah. and it's just, you never, you're never going to get everything perfect, but you know, you learn as you go and you just try to make things better each year, you know? So yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely. At first couple of years, like, how did we even make this happen? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's like when you're driving home and you're tired and you're like, how did I get home? Yeah. 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 yeah I do much. that all the time. I look back in retrospect, I have like a busy day or a busy week and I'm like, how, how did I how do did all these? Happen? I don't even know. Some days yeah. you don't even know how you do, how you do what yeah. you do. <laughs> yeah. And like, and one thing that I'm really happy about now is that we have all the recordings and stuff like that too, because I can look back and be like, damn, but that we did that. We made that happen, you know? Cause again, I go back to the, the whole weekend. I don't really get a chance to absorb it. You know, like I'm just going right. Like, it's like a wedding. Sure everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just like a wedding, just like a wedding. Yep. And it's like, I, I, I made a conscious effort last year to be more present because there have been years where I just don't even remember anything happening because it was just so freaking fast paced. Like I had, there was one year where it was just a big clusterfuck with the, with the photographer and like the videographer that we hired. And I had to do all that stuff myself and it was just bad. It was just really, really bad. And I, I don't, I don't remember anything from that year. And that was our biggest year. That was our highest attended year. And I don't remember thing from that year because I was that so sucks. I was just so I was putting out fires every two seconds I was putting out fires. Well, I was gonna say seconds. like the, that's a really important vendor yes. you know that is your memory yes yes it's just like a wedding like yes you do not skip out on your photographer or videographer that's what you have forever <laughs> yeah and I could go yeah. on a whole rant on that and it was just like it was just really bad we're just gonna leave that <laughs> we're not gonna dwell. We're not gonna dwell. But I, but ever since that year, yeah. But ever since that year, I'm just like, okay. I, every year, I made it a conscious effort to be more present and be more in the actual moment and say, listen, I, I put all this work into this. I better freaking enjoy it too. You, you know what I mean? Enjoy like, it too. absolutely. I'm like, yeah. I'll still, I'll still, I'll still track my macros and stuff, but I'm gonna have some cocktails. Absolutely. <laughs> Kitty time. I know, right? Yeah. The one dude, I can't, God, I can't remember his name. There was one um, bartender yeah. that we had last year that he, like, as soon as you see me, he would have a vodka soda ready, ready for me. Every time you saw me, he was like, here you go. <laughs> was like, you're like, you're my man. Thank you. He was the best. Thank you. <laughs> he was the best. Um, but yeah. That, so, you know, it's just one of those things, again, I, I want to be present. I want to actually enjoy it because you never know, like, like we've talked about this all the time when it comes to competing, it's like that too. You never know. You may not ever get a chance to get back on stage again. You know, this could be it, you know, so you better enjoy it. You know, the, today could be your last day, so you better enjoy it. Right. So yeah, yeah that's where we're at. <laughs>
that's that, all that long, to say. Long and short of it, that's where we're at. So, so for the ladies that are coming, I wanted to make uh, make note of this too. So for the ladies that are coming, and I'll say this again when we're when we're there. I highly encourage like pictures, you know, Instagram posts, all those kinds of things, stories, all of that, but just not full length, long recordings. Right. So for obvious reasons, like we just said, safe space and things like that, we are recording the whole thing. So the recordings will be available after, um, be present in the moment versus trying to record everything. You know what I mean? And, and remember it's a safe space. So we don't want to feel like people are being exposed, you know what I mean? That we want them to feel comfortable to be able to share and all of that too. So of course I'll say that. Yeah. I'll say all that at the event itself too, but I know a lot of ladies right. watch this po- podcast too. So that that'll be a little, a little precursor to that so that they, they know that they have the, the ability to ability be to, open. yeah. The yes. ability to just be, open, be mindful of be mindful. when you're pressing Correct. record. Exactly. That's right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like what they talk about with like recording in the, in the gym locker rooms, kind of that kind of thing. Exactly. <laughs> When in doubt, don't. <laughs> Correct. Yes, that's exactly right. If you're questioning it at all, just yes, don't do it. That's just all. don't. That's all. Exactly. Just don't do it. There'll be, there'll be plenty yeah. of opportunity to review their material and all of the, that kind of stuff. So I mean, honestly, when you're like in the ballroom, like when it's when things are happening, I was not, not on my phone at all. Like yeah. you're just so busy. You're so mm-hmm. like enamored in what's on stage or what's happening. Yeah. Like truly, you, you probably won't even need your phone all weekend. Right. It's, right. it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you yeah. don't feel like you need your phone. <laughs> that's right. And again, like yeah. one of the things that I thought was really cool last year is the girls started a shared album on their phones. So they all started yes. sending pictures back and forth to each other which i thought was awesome so you yeah. know those kinds of things completely welcomed um all of that but again just a reminder that it's a safe space too so yeah yes. so, so no recording no recording <laughs> on the intimate moment <laughs> right exactly so with that let's talk about today's topic which is the rest and recovery so um the reason why that this came up is because there was a post that was shared by he's a coach in our industry actually um austin austin, gosh, austin Stout. Last name. thank you Stout. um yep very, actually, very knowledgeable. Yes, he actually Good coaches, coach. you know, one of the girls that I sponsor and all that too and um, and all that. So I wanted to read his post. He said, 2023 share. He said, arresting means you should actually rest. There may be a time and a place for active rest depending on your goals and overall programming. Don't confuse that with trying to cover up the fact that you don't know how to calm down. Maybe you have some extra errands to run or things to do that you didn't have time for on your typical training day. That's fine. But trying to find an excuse to do something more that day isn't rest. Also sitting there anxious about not being in the gym isn't rest either, not to mention that's likely a pretty unhealthy thought process. If you don't rest, then eventually your body will force you to when it's had enough. Then a single rest day won't save you. Learning how to rest is as important of a skill as any other. So what are your thoughts um, reading that as far as do you agree? Do you not agree? What are some, some key points in that and all of that? I couldn't agree more. Um, Mm -hmm. This is something we've talked about on the podcast, but I am huge when it comes to recovery, to body work, to rest days, to deload weeks. It's extremely important. Um, You know, I'm somebody that usually gets body work done once a week. I actually have not had body work done since the week of the Olympia with everything going on. I go this Mm -hmm. week for body work again. And I feel terrible. You know, my body is just used to that stretch and that massage work, and that's how I recover. And I don't really feel like I'm 100% recovered right now, obviously, with, you know, moving the gym and things like that, but, you know, just not having that extra added level of recovery. Um, Something else that I noticed, too, which he touched on, is people are just very afraid of rest days, Um, maybe fear is not, is not the right word, but they just don't want to, you know, there's people that are just anxious and they just, you know, like to keep moving. They don't like to sit. They don't like to do anything, but it's really important to take that step back for your body to, to rest. I mean, sleeping is a form of recovery and rest, which is why coaches should be monitoring your sleep progress. You know, if you're not recovering and you're also not sleeping, that's directly tied probably to your, your recovery. Um, so I agree with it wholeheartedly. And I think that it's something that people need to take more seriously. Um, I always say to my girls, if you can, can afford it, try to get body work done at least once a month. Mm -hmm. And then, but other things that don't cost money, foam rolling, you know, going and finding a steam room or a hot room that you can get warm and stretch and do your own level of stretching in 10, 15 minutes a day. There are definitely ways that you can do your own recovery that does is not expensive, mm-hmm. but it just takes a little bit of time. 
definitely. How do you feel about it? Yeah, and I, and I agree with what he's saying too, as far as, you know, some people take that rest day to mean like, okay, I'm going to go do something that's not bodybuilding, that's just as active. You know what I mean? Like, like no, I see that happen. Yeah. Well, I see people too that are like, well, I'm going to go do a CrossFit workout this day because that's not my, that's not bodybuilding. So I'm resting from bodybuilding. It's like, no, 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 that's, that's very, very active. <laughs> You know, like there's, that's, there's yeah, a, there's, that's there's a, yeah, there's a happy medium there, you know, like, and I see this a lot. Um, I think more so in women than I do in men, like men are more willing to take day off and just kind of chill. Whereas women, I think, I think it's an addictive thing, just like anything else. It's, it's an, addic an addictive thing. And I see it with diet. I see it with training. I see it with cardio. They don't want to stop. Um, you know, I think a lot of it comes from past um society norms like we talked about like the 90s where you being skinny was the thing and like i see girls a lot now that are like when they get to be stage lean they don't ever want to be not stage lean you know and so they continue to run themselves into the ground to try to stay there um when your body's not supposed to be there and it's it's not supposed to sit there it's not supposed to live there um and i and Eventually what happens to every single one of those girls, I've seen it happen, they go the complete opposite way and completely blow up and their hormones are fucked and they just can't do anything about it to, to lose weight at that point because they've driven their bodies into the ground. They've driven their bodies into the ground. Um, there is such thing, like we talked about this last week with Devin, finding a life, a, a life um, happy medium kind of thing. Um, there is such a thing as a livable physique and a competitive physique. And this has changed over the years too. This is actually something I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive into when I'm doing my talk um, at CCTS this coming weekend, but th this has changed with the standards of the criteria and things like that too. I mentioned this on my Instagram post the other day, for a woman to get hamstrings to come in as tight as we need to come for them to come in on stage, that's not a livable condition for 99.9% .9 of women, right? No. It's just not, it's not, it's not a norm. And, and it most, never should be or will be. No. And most women no. cannot get there without enhancements. Um, most women cannot stay there without enhancements. So that means you're continuing to stay on these drugs and things like that constantly in order to stay there, you know, um, and that's not good for you. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what you say. That's not good for you. You know, Absolutely. Um, those, those things, your body needs to recover. Like I've talked about with my reverse, I'm feeling better about everything now. Now that I'm about, about six weeks post show, everything I feel like is starting to level back out. I had my call with premier. Um, and like I said, like everything is basically where it was when I came out of prep last year. And a lot of those things have to do with, with fatigue and with um, my body just being run down. And that, that, that's what happens when you're in prep. So when you come out of prep, you got to give yourself the ability to, 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 to recover and not be like that anymore, you know, to get back to baseline. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is the hardest time frame to take rest days because you feel like you're going to put on 10 pounds. If you take a rest day, how many Correct. people like went through the holidays and were like, if I eat on Christmas, I'm going to gain 10 pounds. Yep. So many people felt that way. Like so yep. many people, if I take a day off, if I don't go train, if I don't do this, blah, blah, blah. It's not, your body's not like that. Your body doesn't know a holiday. That's the first thing. Your body doesn't know those things. All it knows is when it's getting an influx of calories or whatever, you know what I mean? So um, your body needs those times. And I'm, I'm, I'm the first one to say that I, I did that kind of stuff. You know, I, I had the extreme mentality for a very long time. And actually I think last year was probably one of the reasons probably why I got COVID because my body was just run down and I didn't give my ch myself a chance to recover. You know, I got- Great point. You know, I think I got the flu when I was at the Olympia. And then when I got home, instead of allowing my body a couple extra days to recover, I went back to the gym and guess what? I got COVID. So, you know, my body was susceptible and and, and torn down and it, it, that's what happened, you know? Uh, and it forced me to stop. It forced me to take recovery. It forced me to, 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 to sit out for a minute. And then my body ended up being 10 times better when I got out of that period because I took the rest that I needed. You know, like he said in that post, what if you if you get to the point where your body can't recover anymore, one rest day isn't going to do it for you anymore. <laughs> you know, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, you're you're going to need to full on recovery, which could be weeks, could be months, could be years, um, and it does it does happen quite frequently. So, I know even now, I don't like taking rest days because I get into a routine. 
right? Like I have my routine where I do everything in the morning that I got to get done. And then I go to the gym at one o'clock and I do my, my training and stuff like that. I come home and I finish my work or whatever for the day. That's my routine. So when I go to do a rest day, it's hard because I'm knocked out of my box and I'm not doing what I normally do. And I'm like, shouldn't I be doing something else right now? You know, that, and that is something that I work on mentally. That is something that I work on mentally. I make myself take rest days. You know, like I said, like I knew this past week, I knew something was going to come up where I was going to miss a day. So I, I knew when I got my Botox appointment on Friday, <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, I know today's got to be my rest day because I can't, I can't train when you get Botox. For those who don't get Botox, you can't train after can't you know, train. cardio or anything like that. The day for can't lay down. Hours. Yeah, correct. Yeah. You can't lay down for four <laughs> hours. You can't train. You can't do cardio for 24 hours, all of that. So I knew, um, <laughs> I knew that that, was, that had to be a rest day, you know? Um, exactly. You know, so those, those, those things that even that tells you that you need to give your body rest sometimes, you know what I mean? When you're doing just a simple procedure like that means you got to let your body recover from that pr procedure. You know what I mean? So, um, and we talked about this in the, uh, for the question that somebody asked about the breast augmentation and recovery period and things like that too. Your body needs time. So, you know, you, you just put yourself through surgery, give yourself time, your body to recover from that surgery. It's going to put all of its resources towards recovering from that surgery. Same thing when you're coming out of a prep or, you know, even in an off season, if you're kicking your ass in the gym, your body needs time to recover from that. You get muscle growth when your body repairs. You don't get muscle growth when you tear your body apart. We tear our bodies apart during the off season. You should, at least you should be if you're training right. to, to failure and things like that. The only way that you're going to grow is if you recover. Otherwise, you're just right. continuously tearing yourself down and you're not going to yeah. grow. <laughs> I mean, literally muscle hypertrophy. Like when you're in the gym and you're training, like your muscle is built up of, of, of fibers, right? Yeah. So when you're, let's say we're, we're training biceps, you're literally breaking those muscle fibers in half. And then the recovery process is them stitch themselves back together, creating a larger surface area. And now we have a bigger bicep, right? But if you're constantly just breaking down the muscle, breaking down the muscle, breaking down the muscle and not giving it time to recover, you are going to get injured. Imagine you just keep ripping that muscle fiber apart, never giving it a chance to sew back together. That's mm -hmm. why we tend not to train body parts on back to back days. Yes. So yes, their recovery has to, you know, and, and there's physical recovery and there's also mental recovery. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to a friend, a good friend of mine who's in some pretty intense uh, mental health therapy right now. Mm -hmm. And she's noticing that her workouts are struggling because of where her mental space is. Mm -hmm. I told her, why don't you just take, when you have a therapy session like that, like, take two or three days off from the gym to really yeah. process what you just went through. And then your session is going to be better because where this is, the yes. physical goes as well. So there's also mental recovery when it comes to recovery as well. Um, there's so many facets of recovery that really we, we tend to forget or not think about, but something else that I, that I thought was interesting that you said too, is training intensity. Mm -hmm. Like you should feel like you need a rest day. Yep. at least once a week absolutely if you're not maybe you should be looking into is my training volume too high am i supposed to be training to failure and am i truly training to failure um you know i, I tell my girls all the time like when you're in the gym and you're supposed to be training to failure and you know they'll come at me and in their check-in and be like do i really need to take the 60 seconds to 90 seconds and i'm like well you should feel like you need yes. the 60 seconds to 90 seconds of rest yep. in between sets if not I want you to be looking at your intensity level in the gym. So it is, it's, it's, it's really important. And honestly, something that's very simple that people just don't do a, a lot of is just focusing on your sleep and your water intake. Those mm -hmm. are two really easy things that you have complete control over and can make a huge difference in your recovery and yeah. the way that you feel. Absolutely. And, you know, just like you said, just the, the, the quality of food sources and things like that too, and all of that stuff, what you put in both, nutrition wise and brain wise comes out through your, your physical, right? Absolutely. You know, absolutely. So no one feels good. The, the day after the holiday is getting back in the gym. You feel mm -hmm. gluttonous, you feel blah from all the fats mm -hmm. and absolutely. That also translates to how you feel and how your body's going to use those foods to recover and train yep. and energy systems and things like that. And one thing that, uh, that has happened over the last you know few years is people are saying you have to have an off season from, from competing. And there's still some people that don't think you need to have an off season, which I don't agree with. Um, and you got to look at other sports too. Like <clears throat> th there's a reason why football season is from, you know, the end of, of summer until winter. And then they're off the rest of the year. 
you know, what do you think they're doing during that time? <laughs> right. They're working on their skills. They're working yes. on their strength. They're building. They're, they're trying to be better for the next time they come into football season. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that with every single sport, every yeah. single sport, baseball, basketball, they all take off seasons. Yes. There's no year round baseball teams. No. And baseball, it, people are probably going to hate me for this, but baseball is one of the least athletic <laughs> sports out there, honestly. I mean, you're right. hitting a ball and you're running for like a sprint and that's it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I, know that's I know that's really something. No, no, no. I no, no, I know you mean but it's not a continuous <laughs> yes. uh, activity, you know? Yeah. They, they get ample yeah. rest yes, in between even golf. hitting, running. Yeah. yeah, even golf. Golf is the, the least athletic, probably it's worse than even baseball, right? Like athletic type of sport out there. They don't do golf year round. They have other time, other things that they're working on. They're working on their drive. They're working on their swing. They're working on whatever. They still go through training. They go through strength training. They go through mental improve training. your they performance. Through, yes. They go through all of that stuff when they're not playing the game. Right. You have to remember that here with this sport too. You have to do all of those other things so that when you play the game, the game is better. Right. Absolutely. You know? And it's like, you, you look at, it's like, we don't, you know, when you look at sports like baseball and basketball and football and things like that, they don't have like big swings in their weight usually, but football players kind of do sometimes and they go off season. If they're trying to build strength and endurance and agility and all those kinds of things towards their, their given position that they play, they're going to put on weight. They always talk about that when they're, when like, the guys come back to spring training or whatever, and they're like, Oh, he's up 20 pounds from what he was last season. You know what I mean? And it's from them training and differently than what they were doing when they were playing games every Saturday. Absolutely. Drew and I have coached a ton of high school athletes to, co to college athletes yeah. and they'll go away for their first season in college. They come back and the coach calls us knowing that they're going to be strengthening and conditioning with us yep. during the summer. And for one of the athletes in particular, I'm thinking of football player D1, they were like, we need 35 pounds on him by the time he gets back. We put him on a diet plan. He trained hard, hard, hard AF six days a week in our gym. We sent him back 35 pounds above, but he goes into training and then they start dropping all that weight because now he's yeah. back to running and he's yes. more of a sports specific type training where all summer he's doing a little bit of running, but mostly he's focused on yep. building and strengthening. And that also protects him from Injury, injury in yeah. season you know we talk about football okay patrick mahomes you know his ankle injury if he didn't actually take an off season he would just continue to be injured and now everybody's favorite quarterback is his performance is just gonna you know be worse and worse and worse he's not gonna yeah. be fun to watch anymore yeah. a really interesting documentary on that is a quarterback on netflix okay. and it followed them in their transition from in season to off season and kind mm. of what they do and recovery is it they it followed three main quarterbacks and all three of them pri prioritize recovery, recovery in some sort of way, shape, or form in the weeks in season and then 100% in the off season. Yep. And it's very interesting yeah. to see like how they bring that recovery piece in and how some of it's sports specific and some of it's very generalized. But at the end of the day, every day had some sort of recovery, foam rolling, manual stretching on their own with somebody. I mean, it's, it's, the possibilities are endless of what well, you can it, do with recovery. I can't remember exactly. But, um, Tom Brady was big into like yoga and stuff like that. Um, I can't yes. remember. My husband was telling me something about how he used to train, but it was it's most all of his training was was centered around recovery. And that and man he played did that, played that until he was in his forties. Yeah, yeah. All he played until he was in his forties. I mean, you don't yeah. see people do that in, in football. Like usually, they're done by the time they hit age thirty. Yep. You know? Yeah. I mean, that doesn't tell you something. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Tom Brady, he had, a, I forget what the specific type of training is. He wrote about it in his book, but it's very recovery based and yeah. it's not to failure. I believe it's barefoot training as well. I forget the, the name of it, mm -hmm. but it is, it's very recovery focused mm -hmm. strength yep. training. Yep. Um, so yeah, and he's he's played a long time. Yeah, still the best in the world. So. Yeah, you know, and that and I think what happens sometimes in our sport in bodybuilding is that a lot of people get into this as you know as a hobby, which is what we are doing it for uh, most of the time. <laughs> and so they treat it like a hobby versus treating it like an actual athlete would treat it. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. When in reality, in, in bodybuilding, you're really pushing your body to its absolute limit when it comes yeah. to what we do, getting getting ready for show. I mean, yeah. we really are pushing it to the limit. So it's, it's yeah, it's a hobby, 
but you have to treat it seriously too, because it can have, it can have serious health effects down the, down the road too. Yeah. You know, I mean, and if you're, and if you're going for a pro card, act yeah. like a pro and yeah. what would a professional do? Yep. A professional will go in, they train five days a week, they follow their plan. It's hard. And then they're also recovering and they're yep. taking time to good, get sleep, get good whole foods, yep. nutrient time, their meals, like all of these things add up at the end of the day as a professional athlete. We talked about watching film, you know, yeah. as an athlete, you should be going to shows and you should be studying right. and talking to judges. That's how you study your own sport. That's right. That's <laughs> so, right. Yes, absolutely. And I think some people like, I, I've heard this several times. They think that if they don't get on stage, people are going to forget about them. And that just is not the case. It's just not no. the case. You know, like you, you look at, um, what we were just talking about at the beginning of this, how fast time goes. And when we started this podcast, you know, 20 weeks ago, it feels like it was yesterday, you know, and that, that's, yeah. that's how, that's how the sport works too. It's like, yeah, I was off stage for four years, but it felt like nothing, you know, right. like I, before I came back, it was four years. And I'm like, where did that time go? You know, it's gone. And everybody still knew who I was. <laughs> Take Ariana anything. Brothers. Ariana yeah. Brothers, yeah. she just came seventh in the world at the Olympia. She won the overall in the 2019 Nationals and took four or five years off from stage. Yeah. Came out her first year in the Pro League with a bang. No yeah. one forgot about her. They were like, oh my gosh, she's back and she improved. Yep. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. like it, it doesn't matter how much time you take off, really. Like, and, and to, I, I didn't see Ari like at shows or anything like that, but I knew her as soon as she came back. Yeah. But like the year that one year that I took off in 2021, I was still at a show every weekend. Yep. I was still hanging out with the promoters and talking to, like, I still made myself available and yep. was there and mm -hmm. no one forgot about me. If anything, I created deeper relationships that season right. and people knew me more. Mm -hmm. It's all in the way that you approach it. <laughs> well, I feel too, like when I, when I retired <laughs> for my, for my four years, <laughs> what does that really mean? <laughs> yeah, I told both, I'm like, go ahead and retire. You'll come back. Um, so <laughs> when, I, when I retired, my mindset changed, you know, I started looking at competing differently. I looked at it from a coaching standpoint versus an athlete standpoint. And I Absolutely. saw it completely different. And I was like, Oh my God, this is what I did wrong for so long. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like all of a sudden it starts making sense. Like, Oh, this is what I should have done. Okay. So now I take those lessons that I learned from when my mentality was different and apply them to the competitor mentality now. And it makes it a lot better to be more successful myself as a competitor, you know? Absolutely. Um, and that's a whole other topic that we can talk about too, as far as what makes you successful as an athlete, but you know, you have, you have to have your own definition of what success is for you. And it's like, for me, I've been, largely more successful since I've come back versus what I did before, because before mm -hmm. I felt like I was just kind of running, turning, 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 you know, and I was chasing placings before and now I'm not, you know, those kinds of things. Like it's just, it's, it's a different, again, it's a different mentality. And you can realize that when you take a step back and allow yourself to do that recovery process <laughs> and be right. like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not really not as good as I thought I was, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just the truth. It's like, you know, you, you have to, you have to give yourself the, the opportunity to see it from a different, from a different standpoint, a different vantage point too. Yeah. I think people too, like, you know, before I was a coach, I wanted to be a physical therapist and my aunt, we, we had uh, three physical therapy clinics in our family and I used to run them. And what I noticed with patients is that they would come in and they would do their physical therapy exercises always when they would come to the clinic and have yes. someone watching them. But when we give them that home exercise program and now they're forced to take it home and do it themselves, they will not do it. it. Yeah. yeah. People just want someone to do it with them or yep. for them. And I think part of, again, going back to being a professional is understanding that this is important and I need to take this on myself and do this. And, and a part of that is recovery, stretching, things like that. If you have chronic pain, low back pain from your bikini posing, take that responsibility on yourself and go grab yourself a yoga wheel to go lay right. on once a day and to do some mobility work in the morning. That's me. If I do not stretch in season, I have chronic back pain. At the end yeah. of the day, that's my problem. Like mm -hmm. I'm the one that is responsible for that. And if I don't do my stretches for two or three days in a row, I get my back pain. That's right. So then I'm like, Oh, well, I didn't, do, I didn't do my stretches. This is my problem. You know? Yep. So it's just taking responsibility for yourself and work what works for you. And even if you don't have chronic pain, you know, stretching and recovery, like that is something that you can go find in any Google or any context of how that's going to help you in your bodybuilding and help you with hypertrophy and muscle building. If yeah. you want to grow your glutes, stretching your glutes are a part of that process. That's right. yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's, it's a really important piece. 
And that's, you know, that's something too, like, I think, you know, like you said, like people, once they're told what to do, there's two types of people, either they're going to go do it, or they're going to wait for you to, to, to make them go do it or whatever it might be. So those are the people, the ones that go do it are the ones that are going to go faster and farther. Absolutely. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I'm like, you, a coach is a coach, is a guide. It's not somebody that's going to sit there and handhold you through the process. You yeah, have to go coach do is it not yourself. your babysitter. No. And I, I always relate this to money too, right? You know, so depending on how much you're paying for your coach, some people are paying anywhere from like 200 to $500 a month, whatever you're paying, whatever it might be. Um, do you expect somebody for, let's say on the high end, $500 a month to hold your hand through everything that you do all day, every day of that month? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I mean... I don't. Let's, you yeah. know, like that, that $500 is a trip to the grocery store at this point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you have to realize, understand what you're paying for and what you need to take responsibility for. You know what I mean? I'm talking like, about this at CCTS. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. the truth. You know, yeah. you, you have to realize that, that handing over money isn't going to automate and automatically make you look like Ashley Kaltwasser. It's not going to automatically make you look like Jennifer Dory. It's not going to automatically make you Sid Gillian, the most winning figure pro of all time. You know, it's not, it's not, not going to do that. Right. It's not going to do that. Guarantee. Right. No, you, you got to go do it yourself. Yeah. You, you know, but there's a, there's a guy, there's somebody that shows you the path. You have to actually walk down it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yes. so yeah. And part of that so is recovery. recovery <laughs> part of that is recovery. See how we tied that all together. <laughs> tied it. <laughs> I know, right? Um, but yeah, it's very important. Um, sleep is huge, like we talked about. You know, this weekend at CCTS, um, we will be going through a lot of relaxing, rejuvenating things too. You know, we have our, our spa people there. We've got our um, our surgery people there, our Botox people, our face facial people, our massage people. So all you can get your recovery in while you're there at CCTS too this coming weekend. So get a massage for Massage Hope while you're there, you know, go get yourself a facial while you're there. If you want to go to the actual spa at the Ritz, you can do that too. They do amazing spa treatments there. <laughs> Um, you know, and other than that, I mean, you have rejuvenating time and, and re refreshment time and all that kind of stuff too. So, you know, I guess we got, you got to have that one with all the girls too. See, so yes. Tied it, tied all, it all the together. things. Tied it yes. all in together, right? <laughs> I, I, I must say I did, I did leave CCTS last year feeling so rejuvenated Good. and, um, inspired, but fresh. So yeah. My whole thing is like, is because we still, weekend. we do a, a, a intensive posing clinic on Monday morning too, that goes till noon. And then that's when we tear everything down and, and put everything away. And then they always let me stay. And I go to, I go to the pool and I just fall asleep at the pool. <laughs> I get in the hot tub. I fall asleep get a little at the pool. Siesta. Yep. I have my, my, my little thing of water and I'm like, all right, this is, this is my relaxation time until, you know, till the, the traffic dies down and I can drive home. <laughs> Good for you. That's what I do every definitely, year. definitely needed. <laughs> yep. So that'll be my recovery. Until then, I will probably get two hours of sleep throughout the weekend. So don't mind my bloodshot eyes and all of that kind of stuff. It's just part of it. It's okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I'll get plenty You're of gonna steps. You're going to look in. beautiful. You will look beautiful. Like I told always. you. I'm not going to have any problem getting my steps in. I know that. So we're good. Oh, <laughs> you just, this is you all weekend. Yep. I'll get, I'll get a little pump in. With the, yeah, right. I'll get a little pump in with the workout. Get your bands. coffee. So good. Yep. Get coffee. Yep. Yeah. Load me down with coffee, energy drinks. We're good to go. We're good. <laughs> so we're going to keep it uh, relatively short this time because uh, we got shit to do this week. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, got to leave some time for recovery too. Oh, so the other thing too. So Dan got me this um, LED light thing for my face for Christmas. So it's got different settings, different light settings. So. I'm going to go center to that for about 20 minutes when we finish up with this podcast. <laughs> that's going to be my recovery for today. Good. Uh, Kill two then, birds with one stone. That's right. You know, I, I let this, uh, I let the podcast, um, what's it called? Just actually go through the process after I edit it and everything. And, and that's when I'll go lay down while it's doing that. And then we'll put it up. <laughs> Sean is so good at that. Just, oops, right up. I got it. I got it. So with that, you guys, that's going to wrap up our episode 20. Uh, we will be 
you know, like I said, all weekend, this coming weekend in uh, Tyson's Corner there outside of D.C. So uh, be watching for our YouTube free live feed on Sunday night. We'll be doing that. Um, that's it. Anything else that you wanted to add? I don't think so. All right. Well, See you guys all at CCTN. Yeah. Have a safe flight back to the to the East Coast over here. And uh, like, I'll comment, subscribe. Too. Yep. Follow us on Spotify. Link in the description box. And that's it. All right. See you guys this weekend.